Hi everyone, The Lone Wolf here. Welcome back to EVE Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online. Now, how about that 07 show uh, last uh, Thursday? It was uh, pretty interesting, uh, although the uh, the changes to the fleet warps were not really received all of that all that well. Uh, a lot of people are complaining about it, and while of course a change like that doesn't affect uh, my type of gameplay all that much. Um, I can sort of understand the frustration of uh, limiting the fleet warps uh, by no longer allowing them to be done to uh, scan results and bookmark. So uh, anything that a pilot could not fly to individually, um, he, uh, the fleet warp will no longer work on. Uh, the biggest problem with this change, while their aim um, for it may be uh, a good one you know trying to get more people more involved in what actually happens in the game try and make it a more involved experience uh, the, the problem I see with it is that they're just taking away something that's very convenient and that will of course always um, meet a lot of resistance um, now this is a choice that CCP is making but personally I have to agree I would like to see other options instead I, I would Perhaps if they want to make scouting more uh, important and more involved, um, you should try to add gameplay mechanics that make them more valuable. Um, you know, you could try to add some gameplay mechanics that would actually counter some of the actual problems that exist in the game, like the off-grid boosting. Um, so I would have liked to see a different uh, solution myself as well, just from an objective point of view. Taking away something from the game, taking away convenience from the game uh, is always something that you have to be very careful with. And I do think you should put a lot of effort in trying to find an alternative, uh, which uh, well, here CCP is just straight up going for it. Uh, keep one thing in mind, if I'm not mistaken, I read that uh, CCP's first plan was actually to just get rid of the fleet warp altogether. So <laughs> it might have been a lot worse than it is uh, going to be. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely the controversy of the week, so I thought I'd quickly use that as, uh, as the introduction here. But we are all here for the market normally, so let's uh, get started on that and we'll start as always with Plex. And that one is now at 2.25. Let's write that down. And you can see this is the one year chart. I'm going to switch back to the six month chart just to get maybe a little bit more detail on it. This is where I usually prefer to work from. But we can see that uh, Plex are still going up a little bit. At the moment we're looking at 914 million almost for the sellers. Buyers, uh, the first one is stepping up to 900 million. I did buy several at 800, so that's already a nice 100 million tidy profit right there. Uh, although I feel I don't want to sell just yet. I'd, I'd rather increase my investment and wait for the, the point where they'll actually hit a billion. Uh, but it may well, I, I don't know. It's a bit risky, I feel, to, to try and, and take profits at the moment. Um, you are seeing a few decent sell orders here, 12 and 13 of them coming in here. Uh, but at the moment, I guess there's just still that pressure from all of the new skins um, that's, uh, that's working uh, on, on the Plex market at the moment. And so we're still uh, going up for Plex. It's not very good news for people that want to actually Plex their account. We're actually looking at more than 30 million a day just to get your Plex in 30 days. Uh, multiple pilot training certificates. Uh, after that big dive here, I'm not sure what that anomaly was. We should, I should have bought <laughs> when I actually spotted it. Um, but it's now going back up to 880 million, which is going back in line with the um, with the normal Plex. And so I think that um, these two will once again start moving uh, in balance. If you have any idea what happened right here, maybe someone like dumped their stocks because they stopped playing or something like that, like a, a big player. Um, that is something that that is a possibility, but that's kind of weird to see uh, this this big dive here on the chart and then back up to 880 straight away. And then for the uh, pilot rescop, that one is actually uh, holding steady at, at a decently low price considering the top it's just been. So that one is moving out of sync with the Plex and the multiple pilot training certificates. It's a bit of its own market, which is pretty interesting. I did not expect to see that, uh, but we are talking 179 million. Uh, if you want to buy one straight away of course it's not really something i use myself um, this is uh, purely uh, vanity and uh, cosmetics so um, yeah it's not really that much in in my uh, scope of gameplay either um, anyways let's move on to some minerals then here we go for tritanium and we'll write down 450 for that 
So Tritanium, oh, is actually going down. Uh, 520, has it been broken? 526 for the, for the sellers, 518 for the buyers. I'll quickly go for the one month chart. Look at that, definitely a, a bit of a deviation here, um, but we are already back up to 526. So um, if this comes back up in the next few days, we're actually still looking at a sideways movement for the uh, high stick minerals at the moment, at least for Tritanium. So I think we could be okay. It could just be an anomalous data point here um, and uh, me personally, I am slowly investing a little bit of my extra capital in minerals in preparation for the boom I'm expecting when the structures come out. So this could be a long way away, but uh, well, it's all about uh, being there on time if you actually want to buy them. If you look at a six month chart, it's not a bad time to, to purchase uh, some Tritanium. Here is the Pyrite chart. That one also really dropping down quite a little bit here all of a sudden. Let's see if uh, that price is back up to 11 or not. Nope, 1086 for the sellers, 1080 for the buyers. Very small margin and we're still seeing decent numbers here. Look at that, 73 million, 30, 50, 60, 50. Yeah, right there. Look at that, still pretty big numbers here. So again, if I go for the one month chart, despite the fact that there's like an anomalous data point here, something may have happened in a different station in Gita. Uh, I think, but the, the trend for Pyrite here is down. We'll have to see if this bounces back up. It did a little bit, but 1086, that's still right here on the chart. So um, interesting. Uh, and uh, again, on the six month chart, I think that this is an okay point to actually uh, start stocking up on some of this. Uh, it's, it's at least what I'm doing, you know, that's just, um, don't take this as a gospel. Uh, the market is always unpredictable, but that's uh, my line of thinking at the moment. Here is uh, Mexalon then. Again, after the big drop, uh, we are seeing that here at the tail end, um, Mexalon is again dropping off as well. So all the high seek minerals across the board uh, are dropping with a weird anomalous uh, data point right here. I wonder what happened. Uh, but this is good for me because uh, I'm definitely heading back to Gita, putting up a couple more ambitious buy orders for these. Uh, we're currently looking at 43.69 for the sellers, below 44, which I think I bought uh, a little bit of mix on that, and then 41.88 for the buyers. So you could probably pick some up at 42 ISK, which is right here on the chart. That's definitely the lowest point in six months. Next up here, we've got Isogen. That one was still dropping. It was actually dropping far more consistently than Tritanium, Pyrite and Mexalon, which I would have said that they've actually been moving uh, sideways after the correction. But um, Isogen is heading for 105 and it is there already. 1499, still 48 million Isogen coming in here. 102.71 for the buyers. So you can actually pick up Isogen close to 100 ISK. And uh, that's right here on the chart, pretty decently low. So again, uh, Isaac Minerals, they're going down in value. Uh, your mining in Isaac is also going down in value. But I feel for a long-term investment, that uh, could be a pretty damn good idea. Next up, we have the Nox. Oh, we actually still have Noxium. Um, that one has been, uh, yeah, moving in, in quite a bit of of a more erratic fashion, but it's managing to hold on at its current price point. So 534 for the sellers, 517 for the buyers, uh, at least pretty close to that. I must say still again here, 9 million units, another million units, another million units, all of this coming in here, way bigger than the buy orders. So there is a bit of pressure on the Noxium price here as well at the moment. But that one to me seems like it's actually trying to hold on. Keep in mind that that one is also very low on the six month chart. And then next up, of course, we've got uh, the Nozick ones, Zydrine, which has been doing quite well. Uh, the only good news for Zydrine, I would say, is that we are seeing 5-day moving average going down and possibly crossing the 20-day moving average. That could be good news for a bit of downward pressure. Let's take a look at some of the supply numbers here. 13 million, is that? Uh, that's actually a pretty old one, but here we've got 2.8 million, pretty recent. Uh, just below 1,400, that's going to put a bit of pressure on this. Uh, still the buy orders here, 2 million here pretty much offsetting this so it's hard to say that there is oversupply this seems to be the current price and then we'll check out mega site here very similar situation um, where the five day moving average is finally going down a little bit and seemingly crossing the 20 day moving average right now supply number 700,000 600,000 yeah, a little bit more supply than the month but it's not massive and for these nozick minerals it's really the uh, the suppliers that tend to dictate the price much more than the buyers so 
um, this could not this is possibly uh, something that does not indicate a pressure on the price despite the fact that it looks like there may be oversupply it's something typical of megasite and zydrine that it's actually the sellers will come to the market to try and sell it for the price that they want and uh, it's very difficult to pick up megasite from buy orders so yeah, that's it for uh, for the minerals maybe i'll touch on morphite which did that really big jump up uh, with the endosis link uh, so that's something that i completely missed and that's definitely too bad because well we could have bought for very cheaply uh, not that long ago um, below 6000 isk we're currently looking at 11000 isk for selling morphite that would have been a very tidy profit it's something that i completely missed uh, but keep in mind I've, I've only reached the 20 billion mark personally on my wallet which is like uh for some reason for me it's a psychological barrier that okay anything above that I'll, I'll dump into stuff that i think will increase in value and i've only been doing that uh, rather recently uh, so now i'm hoping not to miss a train like that by actually investing uh, my extra isk in different types of goods and doing a little bit of day trading on the side as well um, anyways that's it for the minerals then yeah that morphite spike i completely missed it i'm sure that some people made uh, really a lot of money because that's pretty much a doubling uh, of the price here for morphite um, but um, we'll try to uh, to stay on top of it a bit more now that i'm actually investing everything that i make back into goods uh, let's take a look at the impact on tech one chips then and that's 11.30 i'll put that down uh, here is the apocalypse uh, breaking out a little bit uh, again heading towards 182 million yeah 183 for the sellers 178 for the buyers um, let's take a look if is there extra supply there is extra supply coming in here though 17 5 although there is a big order of 20 apocalypse is coming in here as well but 174.5 that is uh, right here on the chart so that's pretty ambitious that's a little bit like uh, one of my orders uh, often does look like um, but at the moment yeah, the, the apocalypse is actually moving in a band of I would say 178 to 183 or 182 uh, something like that a little bit higher than previously but honestly decently stable ever since April so uh, I think that uh, with a bit of extra supply because of the current uh, high point this will actually normalize decently quickly as long as the 20 day moving average doesn't break out of the 180 all of a sudden I think we could still be uh, okay for uh, the apocalypse next up the caracal that one is going up um, it is a standard cruiser um, didn't fuzzy um, hint at the rebalancing of the uh, combat cruisers i think so and the the caracal jump here could actually be related to that although we can clearly see on the chart that uh, the caracal is something that uh, no spikes decently often and this is because of how popular it is with some of the big alliances uh, so this could be that as well let's take a look here well, pretty much empty except for the big orders that are coming in here with 144 of them but all of this is pretty recent so someone did come in and basically clean out the market of caracals here is the dominics then i'm actually really happy to see this uh, the uh, the dominics moving back towards its 195 average which i think is, is more normal for the dominics whereas it moved towards 205 for a little bit there during the april changes to the minerals so um, i'm happy to see that this actually means that the uh, to me at least that the impact of the mineral changes to the tech one market has been absorbed by now and most of these seem to be moving back uh, into a, a stable normal well supplied uh, situation which we had over the summer uh, and I feel that that's actually very important for the take one ships. It's, it's the thing that new players go to. And uh, if all of a sudden that would become unaffordable or dirt cheap so that manuf new manufacturers can't do anything anymore, that would actually be a problem, I think, for the general economy. So I'm happy to see that uh, here again, 196 for the sellers, 190 for the buyers. You can still pick up a Dominix below 200 million at a pretty good price. And you can, you've been able to do so for quite a while, which I think in the tech one ship market, it's actually pretty important to have that stability. Here is the Myrmidon then, also back to 52 million after a couple of uh, pretty big spike spikes here we can still see the uh, impact from that here 28 40 big supply coming in uh, in response to higher prices so this market is still functioning it's still well supplied and uh, to me it seems like it has absorbed the mineral changes 
um, of, uh, of a few months ago. Here's a stabber then, that one is breaking out a little bit, heading towards 12 million. Is this a supply demand problem? Um, not really, except we are more in a balanced situation and the buyers have followed suit. So 24 stabbers, 50 stabbers here. That's actually okay. Uh, but I guess for some reason it's also a combat cruiser. So this could add a little bit to people expecting the stabber to actually come back uh, into the meta or something like that. Uh, whereas it used to be 10 and a half million for a stabber, you definitely pick one up. We're looking at closer to 12 million now. It's probably an exception to the rule. Here is the tornado then. Well, actually also uh, seemingly settling at a bit of a higher normal of 72 million, where 66 would have been the normal before that. So Minmatar ships maybe <laughs> making a little bit of a, of a comeback or an increase in price for those. The buyers have definitely followed suit. There is decent supply, so it does look like uh, the tornado is just going to settle a bit higher. And then we've got the Vexor here, again a Galente ship. Uh, going back towards the 11.2 million so it could be uh, maybe there is a bit of a difference between the races uh, maybe some people are speculating that uh, after the Galente uh, have been uh, the the, uh, the ships to fly for so long with the Ishtar with the drones uh, they've been very popular for a very long time uh, there was the first rebalances of the Ishtar and the Sentry drones have happened um, there were more rebalances coming, so it is possible that people are expecting the meta to move towards Min Matar ships once again. Uh, we've had Kaldari before with the Drake, quite obviously, um, but now missiles are gonna get a boost and yeah, possibly Min Matar coming back into the picture. I think it's a possibility reading this Take One market, uh, but at least for the Galente ships, we're back where we were uh, six months ago when it comes to the price. All right, next up, the Tick 2 market. I actually think a lot of people might be interested in this. So we'll do 1640 uh, because I've actually been trading a little bit. I've been making some money in the Tick 2 market. So here's the Basilisk chart. I didn't buy it. I was a bit too, uh, it was a bit too risky for me because of this very stable period right here. But uh, a proof that you can actually make a lot of money in the Tick 2 market right here. Look at that, going from the bottom at like 175 which i felt was pretty expensive for uh, for a logistics cruiser but a spike up to 210 uh, million that's that's not bad 30 25 30 million up uh, all of a sudden in a very short period of time uh, that's how you make some uh, some trade money here's the guardian then uh, not as big a spike but it's this one and this one that I took advantage of so I actually bought I think below 120 I think it's like 118 where I actually bought a couple guardians and now I managed to sell them uh, on the way up right here I think close to 130 uh, and you could have actually gone as high as 135 but yeah this was some money made by me personally uh, at the moment of course the buying opportunity and the selling opportunity may just be over unless you still have a few from a previous investment then you could still do it uh, but you have to always try and, and see those opportunities uh, if you want to make some trade money of course here's the hound again uh, I think those haven't sold just yet because uh, that move up here is too timid but I guess the hound is slowly trying well no 17 150 no that's actually not going to break out uh, that high just yet but I did buy a few close to 15 million here and I think I'm hoping for 19 million 20 million at some point uh, the fleet warp change is a bit of a hit to the stealth bomber uh, fleets though so I could uh, delay uh, those investments a little bit here's the manticore I've always stayed away from the manticore because of its unusual price more than 20 million um, that uh, compared to the other ones I've stayed away from it because of that Here's the Nemesis though, and this is where I made a lot of money as well. I bought eight of them um, at this low point right here. Again, close to 18 million. Uh, why eight in the Nemesis? Because I can actually fly them, so they still have uh, use for me. Uh, but uh, I, I also sold them, I think, close to 20 million, 19 and a half, riding that wave up. So it does happen. Uh, and this is this is another awesome example here. You could have bought close to 18 or 18 and a half million. And currently the sellers are going for 23 million all of a sudden. This is the take two ship market. This is the trade money that is flowing. And uh, I actually wrote this one a little bit. Um, it's limited, you know, I could have made more, but I'm very happy that I actually made a successful trade. Uh, next up here is the Oniros. That one also knew a little bit of spike. It's already correcting back. 
but look at that you could have bought Oniruses for 140 if you jumped on the chance to buy them at the, at the really low points for six months uh, and then you could have sold them for probably 170 again a 30 million jump uh, that's probably 20 25 percent profit that you can easily make off of this uh, another good example here and then the purifier here breaking out as well I sold all of those two and I actually bought them very close to this bottom here when I saw them languishing uh, at uh, 16 and a half million I bought uh, a couple of purifiers and then I, I sold them uh, on this wave up right here close to 19 million so um, again here buying at 16 and a half selling close to 19 that's uh, that's quite okay as well 3 million on 16 and a half that's a pretty good percentage wise I think and some profit I'm always limited in scope myself I don't feel like risking huge uh, numbers um, but it's 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 fun to do and uh, once in a while you do get lucky and with Eve talk of course I do start to spot certain trends such as the take two market being decently volatile and a potential good money maker here's a scimitar also moving up so uh, although it's been a few weeks where I actually always said I'm not sure I'm not sure this all looks a little bit too stable this week a lot of movement a lot of jumps up all of a sudden in the take two market and uh, so it does show that this market is still alive here you could have bought at uh, 120 or below 120 if you uh, were really on top of the market and then at the moment you've got sell orders of 133 uh, 132 million something like that it's not huge but at least uh, potentially you can make a little bit of profit 10 percent is definitely uh, possible with uh, with this market so yeah take two market still alive very happy to report that next up the take three market 2130 for that one and uh, here is of course the confessor chart uh, these uh, these destroyers look at the numbers 17 20 25 58 61 34 uh, it's just extremely well supplied the gap is completely closing 36 for the sellers 32 for the buyers uh, so this is just something that you can uh, buy and lose as much as you want to you, you know exactly what you have to pay for it I'll quickly check out uh, did I not add the uh, Kaldari one that's strange should really do that let's quickly do that ships destroyers advanced tactical destroyer Kaldari add to the market quick bar and then we move the jackdaw in tick tree so there we go so that was the confessor we checked first here is the jackdaw chart then what are we looking at here 46 million for the sellers 38 for the buyers that and look at the number 17 16 10 21 uh, this is going to normalize very quickly as well and uh, so yeah these have become uh, very affordable ships in just a few weeks time and then the final one at the moment here is the Zvepul here which uh, is well yeah 31.7 for the buyers below 34 million for the sellers very cheap and I think we'll we'll see the Jackdaw move below 40 million uh, pretty soon considering the supply numbers that are coming in here it still has a bit of newness to it um, but uh, that pressure look at that all of these orders are less than uh, one hour old that's just way too much pressure people still trying to eke out that that margin that they still have at the moment because of the newness of the ship but it's not gonna last long and so for the final one that'll come with the next patch the Hecate is that how uh, how it was pronounced in the 07 show the Galente one uh, I love how it looks I'm probably gonna buy one for uh, for the uh, drone sites uh, combat sites that you can probe down and just to take a look at it but I think it, it looks the best out of all of them um, it's also not uh, one that that is like an arrow shaped but it's got the, the opposite going it's more horizontal uh, so it's a bit of a unique beast and so the uh, the Galente one is probably the one I'm actually going to go uh, for personally uh, but then let's take a look um, at uh, the cruisers here so let's take a look at what the Le Legion is be doing a little bit of a breakout but not that much we can see that the five day moving average is trying to cross the 20 day moving average on the upswing again still 10 10 10 10 10 look at the supply it's it's oversupplied so that is constant pressure on the price uh, so um, this could actually be pretty short-lived still moving in the 140 to 150 million range uh, this is just one data point I don't think considering these supply numbers right here that will actually see a breakout of the Legion here's the Loki chart then also trying to go up just a little bit so uh, coming off of a pretty low price of 140 though we're currently looking at 152 
yeah, something happened. Someone bought quite a few lead uh, Lokis, probably everything um, below 150 or something like that, um, which means that uh, the price here, well, it's it's going up just a just a touch. Um, but by next week, I expect a lot of sell orders to come in here. All of a sudden, this uh, this supply gap tends to be filled pretty quickly. Here's the Proteus, then 154 to 150. What does the chart look like? Yeah, up just a little bit, but not that much. Um, definitely moving in the 140 to 160 band and you can see here from the five-day moving average that's already starting to slow down so supply here 17 all of this is decently old but we've got five of them coming in here pretty recently I think that uh, here the oversupply pressure is still a factor the Tengu though is an exception and uh, look at that that one is actually breaking out a little bit more than the, the other ones we're actually looking at 164 for uh, Tengu, you can see the immediate market response though, 15, 10, 29, 17, these are the latest orders, points winding each other. Um, has it, does the Tengu have anything to do with the sleep repeat uh, meta that people were talking about that actually gets a big boost because of the fleet warp changes? I think that's part of it, you know, uh, the changes to the fleet warps is only going to make Tengu kiting fleets even more powerful. Uh, because it will be a lot harder for another fleet to quickly probe them down and then do a fleet warp to them uh, so i think that that could be part of that that swing up right here uh, with the tengu and uh, yeah that's the tech tree market and for the extra material for today 26 15 i'm actually going to go back to some planetary interaction stuff uh, we're just going to choose something completely different so planetary materials and i'm gonna take the advanced pi materials it's not that many of them it's also the most expensive one but it is the final product if you add all of the other ones together so this could be a very good indicator i think for pi in general so this is a six month chart for broadcast nodes and um, this is decently stable right here holding on at 1.4 million for a broadcast node and uh, nothing all too special to report supply demand there's really seemingly good supplies good competition so no reason to fear that it's like drying up or that the supply isn't there and the demand is there as well with decent numbers and a decent amount of quite recent orders so let's take a look at this one here integrity response drones again uh, although on the downward trend right now here at the tail end i would say stabilizing just above 1.4 million so pi seemingly in in a stable period the margin is very very uh, small as well uh, 1.43 1.45 1.47 something like that again pretty healthy numbers pretty decent numbers um, that are less than a day old so this looks like a quite okay and stable market so far let's see if there's any exceptions here nano factory going down a little bit uh, holding at 700,000 um, coming towards the low point part of me is also looking maybe for an investment opportunity uh, one thing that I do notice straight away from that low point we are seeing some bigger uh, buy orders coming in here that could uh, try to establish a bit of a floor but they're not huge so um, I think we could just stay above 600,000 and uh, stay stable there for now organic mortar applicators what's that look like yeah also a little bit lower than what they've been uh, throughout most of the year so far uh, and supply demand here that actually looks okay a bit of a bit of demand here uh, starting to come up uh, in bigger numbers close to 700,000 so apparently the ones that cost 700,000 have gone down over the year but are finding their bottom at 700,000 here as far as I can tell here's the recursive computing module that one knew a little bit of a jump up here but it's now stabilizing at 1.2 million and again this looks this looks quite okay quite a few uh, recent orders coming in here trying to compete on the sell order sites and then there are a few of those new orders here as well here and there actually not that many um, on the buy order side of things which could actually put a bit of pressure on the price considering it's jump up right here that's actually kind of normal and uh, the numbers here they look quite healthy 
self-harmonizing power core next that looks quite okay at 1.4 million so it's it seems that uh, depending on the amount of need materials some of them are like half the price of the others um, that uh, the one at one point the ones at 1.4 million are really decently stable right around that point and the one at 700,000 are finding a bit of a bottom for the year sterile conduits then 0.8 also pretty stable although coming towards a pretty low situation considering it's been above 1 million for a little bit here in march um, but to get here these numbers they look quite okay a uh, couple of recent ones right here just one and just one so sterile conduits not that active a market and a little bit of demand this could actually put some pressure on the price to go back up a bit and then the wetware mainframes 1.5 million actually dropping off a little bit let's see if that's actually happening 1418 1475 so yeah a bit of pressure on the wetware uh, wetware mainframe uh, a lot of supplies yeah uh, really a lot of supplies look at that all of these less than a day old uh, so that is the reason why that one is dropping a little bit but overall the uh, advanced pi material market looks to me to be decently stable at the moment although some of them are um, a little bit lower than what they were throughout most of the year but overall this looks like actually a very uh, stable market and um, if you are in the right position that you can actually produce this and you have cheap supplies of the uh, the actual uh, the other pi materials this could be a pretty stable business from uh, my point of view anyways that's it for this if talk then guys thank you very much for watching i'll see you all next time